And we're streaming, guys. And we're streaming right now. It is 9.01 a.m. U.S. Pacific Daylight Time here in Los Angeles. Thursday, November 4th, 20... I always pronounce it 4th, but I think it's 4th. 2021 A.D. Anno Domini. The year of our Lord. And having problems once again with the... uh, with. And I did try to fix it. I thought that I had had it fixed with the computer, but the show must go on, I think. (laughs) Mustn't it? So I'm going to be touching on uh, the CRT in the schools, critical race theory in the schools. Yes, indeed, it is there. I never called it that, but the fake idea of racism being pushed. The fake idea of racism, even before they came up with the CRT mess. Uh, Commie teachers, dumb, useful idiots, blind, misleading the blind. Am I right? So I'm going to talk about that. I had a clip prepared for you. I don't know if I'll be able to get to the clip, but hopefully so. We shall see. My computer's frozen. Well, at least that aspect of that computer, the, the finder. I guess Macs don't like talking to PCs or something like that. Some type of issue has come up. Not sure what's going on. But uh, there was this black gay who was all mad about the election. And no, I'm not talking about Van Jones. Isn't Van Jones? He doesn't seem totally morally straight, but I think he is married. May even have a child. Um, The ongoing invasion and other items, guys. But anyway, let's get right on. With the show! One, two, three, four. Oh, it's the Hake Report. The Hake Report. La, la, la. Oh, it's the Hake Report. The Hake Report. La, la, la. Hey, guys! Oh, it's the Hake Report. The Hake Report. La, la, la. So, how are you guys doing? I am fine, despite a slight annoyance here with the uh, inability for our computers to talk to each other. What a mess. What a terrible mess. Hey, hey, I hope your record player is frozen too. (laughs) Man. Man. Yeah, it's just a spinning rainbow wheel thing when I'm trying to do anything. On that, uh, on the finder, especially when I'm connected to the thing. Terrible. So terrible. But, uh, guys, we have the, the men's forum. Make sure you join the men's forum if you are in the area or if you can make it out, make the drive down. It's always excellent. It's a highlight of the month. I love the men's forums. Uh, I love the church services. That's why I became the producer for the church services. That's why I even know about JLP because... I came to this church by way of word of mouth. Always cool. So, uh, indeed, the critical so-called race theory mess is in the schools. It's a fact. Despite that lion Earl who called into the show, who used to call into the show. He hasn't called in in a while. I wonder if he's listening. Repeating... Lies from the mainstream media because he's a sucker for the mainstream media blind brainwashed sucker And it's easily it's easy to sucker the people who are Bitter like Earl my second favorite caller To this day is my second favorite caller, even though I haven't heard from him in some months uh, To this day you know, as, as JLP says, it's easy for angry people to believe lies, and it's hard for them to believe the truth. So I had this clip from a man on Twitter whose Twitter handle was Mr. Daniel Buck. And I don't have the ability to play this clip for you because uh, JLP is going to get rid of all computers when he becomes president. 
but he's a teacher, runner, runner, avocado toast, avocado toast millennial, Canon evangelist. I guess that means he likes Canon, those cameras, right? C A N O N. That's a that's a brand of cameras. Am I right? And uh, yeah, no more crypto. <laughs> He's a founder of Chalkboard Review. He writes, he's written for Quillette, City Journal, which is a decent outlet sometimes, National Review Online, which is mostly, mostly a rhino outlet, et cetera. He's, and he's a fellow at the Education Gadfly, Gadfly, whatever. And he said, he mocked that, this quote, critical race theory is all a Republican lie. It doesn't even exist, you know? That's what the lies were by the mainstream media, CNN, Common Nonsense Network, that female who went from Fox News to CNN, one of them, I think a few did, uh, and others, and that black female, uh, Joy Reid. I played a clip of Joy Reid talking to one of the f- black females who helped popularize this or come up with it or push it in college decades back, like in the 70s or something. And she, w- she did not answer whether it's taught in school. She did not answer whether it's Marxist. She did not answer the- any of Joy Reid's questions. Is it really Marxist? <laughs> Is it really in schools? She did not answer it. She said, oh, I wish it were more so. Well, this notion that it's a Republican lie is false. I'm a teacher, says Mr. Daniel Buck. It's in schools. And... He wrote in American Mind on uh, July 30th of this year, denying CRT the left is playing dumb on the ubiquity. That means when ubiquity, ubiquity means it's everywhere. The everywhereness of its radical ideology in our schools. And he says it's there. And he says not just critical race theory, but all critical theory pedagogy, which is a way of teaching. A way of so-called teaching, brainwashing children. And the replies were very interesting to me. Very interesting. (sighs) I wonder if I can... This is obnoxious. I'm going to switch over to uh, my cell phone and just work from my cell phone, guys. Apologies. Bear with me here. Bear with me while I turn off my computer. Stupid thing. So I'm not going to be able to see your chats. But you guys, you guys are saying dumb stuff anyway. Joy Reid is thick. Thick in the skull, says Dark Rose. Nice. Yeah, thank you. Somebody sensible in the chat. It's ridiculous. Can't even function with this computer. So turn that off and uh, we'll work like the olden days from our cell phones. Hold on, hold on, hold on. I'm way up in the hake news section. So here was one guy who was replying to him, and I have a bunch of replies. Too bad I can't show them to you. Uh, Male, um, because, and I noted whether these are males or females. Male, unwoke teacher. (laughs) Nice name, huh? T-C-H-R. Unwoke teacher. Agreed. It is in the schools. I just finished teaching three years in Philly. Last year, instead of fine-tuning our online pedagogy. That's how you teach people online. Because we were online for the majority of the year, I roll. We did a nearly a year-long book study of the Racial Healing Handbook. And I wish I, and I have a photograph of this Racial Healing Handbook, but I can't show it to you. So you gotta look at my uh, handsome face, which is freshly sh- shaved. Well, I shaved it two nights ago. I did not shave last night. Can you tell? Oh, nice. So, shave almost every day November. That's what it is. <laughs> oh, no. I hate this. Okay. All the trademarks of CRT in this one, Racial Healing Handbook. Give me a break. These people are so fake. Are they not? Male Courier Dubois, Dubois on Twitter says, Mr. Daniel Buck, I teach as well in a blue inner city district that has fully jumped on board the critical theory bandwagon. Not just the race thing. It's just Marxism in general. Race, uh, communism in general. 
They recommend the war, which is also pushing uh, class warfare, not just racial warfare. So it's against whites, it's against people who make their own businesses. Uh, they fully jumped on board. They recommended the works of Kendi. That's that Ibram X. Kendi guy who wrote the anti-racist baby. Do I have that here? No, I don't have, we don't have that here anymore. But I showed it to you the other day, and JLP showed it to you. Shout out to Justice. Thank you, Justice, for the, uh, for the gifts. <laughs> Horrific, what they're pushing. Uh, Ibram X. Kendi, anti-racist. How to be an anti-racist. And this guy just hates white people. How to hate yourself. How to hate white people. Evil person. How to hate what's right. How to hate Christians. They are altering the curriculum for U.S. history. They are bringing in Brooklynite academics to pitch their educational programs. Anybody know what Brooklynite means? I don't know. Another older male. Oh, May tw- something. Bunch of numbers. Thank you for the message. Teacher here too. Yes, it is in schools under various course names or lessons. And teachers hear it as well in professional development workshops. It's sanctioned. It's a sanctioned excuse for people to do poorly, give up, and nurture resentments. Thank you. That's a base Gen X or, or, or boomer. Based somewhat in the truth. And then I will get to your calls, guys. Unknown, whether it was male or female, unknown, but his calls himself Centrist America too. As a both former teacher and former socialist... This guy says, I can also confirm that socialist professors have long taught, long since taught critical, critical theory as a fact to education, sociology, anthropology, and even history majors. A lot of these professors were left-wing, left-wing radicals from the 60s and 70s. Yep. There's a female, L. Michelle J. 87, teacher, educator, former teacher. For every you, here's a... She's dumb. I think she's black, too, if I recall correctly. For every you, there are 50-plus other teachers in predominantly white schools who said they went to some training, played two or three race games with students, and went back to their same old, same old. Well, thank God for those 50, but that's, she's lying. She's just come making up numbers. Another round of PD that gets lip service. I don't know what PD means. Public deception? Or public... De- per- Personal, I don't know, professional development, I think that's what that stands for, PD, that just gets lip service. Evil woman, huh? Here's another female named Amanda. I'm a teacher too? With a question mark. What is so threatening about learning how systemic inequity has woven itself into the fabric of every interlocking system? Maybe it's a threat to your fragile philosophy, but it's not a threat to my and many others Pedagogy. Pedagogy, whatever you want to call that word. Pedagogy, I looked it up, has, or pedagogy, has to do with teaching. Don't know how to pronounce it. Don't care. It's a dumb liberal word. (laughs) Or it's an intellectual word. Um, Here's a male. I'm a teacher as well, and CRT is absolutely in K-12 education. Kindergarten through 12th grade. That's five-year-olds through 17, 18-year-olds. Five and six through 17 and 18. Saying otherwise is incoherent. Well, thank you, sir. Thank you. Man, I'm close to getting this. I'm getting all excited, and hopefully it doesn't shut down on me now. Woo! Ah. Shout out to Ian. I wonder if we'll see Ian today. I don't know. Here. Okay, so you deleted that, right? Yeah. Here we go. Fingers crossed, people. Ah, uh, I'm transferring a, f- a thing. Preparing to copy, preparing to copy. Let me just finish reading in the meantime. <laughs> unknown, uh, unknown male or female, combat medic, Purple Heart veteran, says the concept of God isn't logical. I despise libertarian and conservative ideology. Author, I make content. Trumpers are a cult. It sounds like a dummy. He says CRT is what we, is when we teach that white people are not better. Stupid snark, huh? Stupid snark. Here's a possible female. It is foundation. Is foundational in many teacher training programs. So the consensus is it's there. Man, it is not transferring. Ooh, not a good idea. I just realized that it wasn't, there was, 
Ah. Uh, uh. <laughs> Do I sound like Cookie Monster? I guess it's not Cookie Monster. I had not downloaded everything. I wonder if that was part of the problem. Can I hit command sp- command period? I c- here, let me open up my chat at least so I can see the chat. See what what are you guys saying? Uh well, uh, yeah, Nick, if you can transfer that Thursday, um, alter the name of that Thursday folder and, and transfer it over to uh, the Hake Report folder, if you can. But you're going to have to delete the Thursday folder because it's going to be empty again, I bet. What a pain. Alter the name of it, call it thir- THR 1104 through dash fix or something. Ridiculous. Relaunch. All of a sudden, guys, it just quit working. And I, it's not like I just irresponsibly assumed that it would work. I, uh... I really thought that it would because I had tested it this morning. <laughs> what a mess. Making up excuses. Uh, here's another one, unknown. Oh no, this is a male. Oh no, this is a white female. Jen Vaughn. Yep, had to read pedagogy. Pedagogy? Somebody tell me if it's pedagogy or pedagogy. And turn on the AC, it's getting hot in here. And open the vent. Pedagogy of the oppressed for my teaching credential back in 2005 as part of a content literacy test. To open up the vent. Content literacy class at a private slash moderate college. I was getting a math credential. Funnily enough, never had any instruction on how to teach math. Tons of DEI, diversity, equity, inclusion. In 2005, that's when I I had just finished school. Am I blocked? Luke, no, you are not blocked. At least not from the uh, live chat. Uh, Do I dare even try this? Let me know, Nick, if you did get it over there. Let me know. Shameful. Here's another male, Ted Cornwell. Pedagogy of the oppressed, pedagogy of the oppressed. I'm just going to say both names until I know. Because it bothers me to not be accurate with how to pronounce these stupid words. Male, Ted Cornwell. So that was one female. Credit to her, she was honest. And not a liberal. Not that liberal, anyway. Pedagogy of the Oppressed was assigned in my freshman seminar, Institutionalized Education, Liberation, or Contradiction, in fall 1973, this dude says. 1973 at private Southern Baptist University. See, it's invaded Christianity for 50 years. Almost. Almost 50 years. Hake is running an Atari 2600. (laughs) We used to have one of those. Plus, de-schooling society. Today's most controversial educational revolutionary gives his prescription for remaking schools to meet our human needs. By Ivan Illich, who endorsed Freer, Paulo, and that's Paulo Reglus Neves Freer, who was a Brazilian so-called educator and philosopher, who was a leading advocate of pr- critical pedagogy. Pedagogy. <laughs> Terrible. It's in the folder, says Nick. Thursday fixed. Wow. What a relief. Okay. And my computer quit, finally quit, uh, freezing up too. Thank you, Nick. Nicolas! I think it's my bad energy, guys. You know, when a, when a boomer, and especially a grumpy boomer, comes near the, uh, computer, it just stops working. And then you get a young man with good energy, like Nick, and I'm not a new ager. Comes around the computer, all of a sudden it starts working fine. <laughs> I think that may be what's happening. Hake's a boomer. I should never have shaved the beard. He got his tech chakras on. Wow, Nicolas. Keep that to yourself. <laughs> oh, man. It's so ridiculous. So shameful. This, uh, this mess I'm, saying, I'm talking about. Uh, so, yeah, even back in 1973, 
Do you want do you have do you want to hear a few more? Unknown libthink. Unknown whether he's male or female. I recently got a degree in education and I can attest to the fact that critical pedagogy is woven all the way through ed ed school. Not only that, but ideas of power, intersectionality, racism as systemic, white privilege, and especially equity was the water water we swam in. Yeah, maybe these people are just so swimming in this fake notion of racism and mess and victimhood that they don't even know that they're in it. (laughs) There's another unknown. Bushy82, I got my B in Bachelors of Ed in 2011 in Australia, another white country, another subverted country, and I did an entire subject called Equity and Justice in Education. I wrote essays on privilege, critical theory, in its many guises, in, is intrinsically linked to teaching. Wow. Another unknown TS. It's not just woven into all the texts being taught. It's woven into the teach- teachers themselves. See? Blind brainwashed teachers. Remember that female who was asked by, like, campus reform or some man on the street? Would you teach this to children? I am a teacher, and I do teach their, about racism stuff. Pretending that Georgia, Florida was this, a victim of racism. The guy with the knee on the neck is woven into the teachers themselves. As naive college kids, they soaked it up like sponges and see the world through that lens. That's why I say knowledge is poison. And he says something powerful here. I love this tweet. I should, uh, I should retweet this. Uh, we won't legislate our way out of this one. Exactly. All these people talking about, oh, uh... Critical race theory all of a sudden they're paying attention to it, but they repeat these rhinos repeat the notion that racism even exists stupid Or am I wrong? No, it's it it is stupid (laughs) I may be uh, going overboard with it, but it's a great point It's we you're not gonna legislate out of it because the culture is corrupt. You have to uh, Fight the lies with the truth and the truth is more powerful Here's another dumb female, Blaze, Blazy, Blazy, Susan B. Thomas, follower of Christ, wife, mother, teacher, learner, writer. Sounds like a nice person, huh? But no, she's on Twitter. That's your first red flag. And here's the second one. The critical theory, the critical word, the word critical here means taking a careful, honest look slash analysis at the role racism has played in our culture. This is a good thing. This is supposed to be a Christian? Stupid woman. Dumb female. Here's another dumb female. IDRN Texas. And her nickname is a Texas girl kicks a LGBTQ ally, according to her. B- brags that she's blocked by Dana Lash. It means she's annoying. Uh, Dana Lash t- is a little annoying too, but blocked by Roy Moore, Judge Roy Moore, real Judge Moore, and blocked by Jacob Wool, that, that based Jew. <laughs> I chuckle, but I, I like him. Kind of. Jacob Wool. Anyway, she says this, a Texas girl kicks a word, says it's called history. And then she shares this meme. You've seen that meme. You've seen that picture that, that, um, are, it's a, uh, illustration from the old times of a slave ship, a ship that shipped slaves. And you see those slaves all laid all in a row next to each other. And her Deal is oh there it is. Here's a this is a dumb meme that this woman shared and she saw it's called history Those against CRT critical race theory in our schools never understood the lesson below And it has this picture of the slave ship with the slaves laying all next to each other all tight and close quarters That's called efficiency. Is that German efficiency or is that Jewish efficiency or is that Islamic efficiency? The Muslims were good at algebra I heard so maybe they were efficient too but that's efficiency. I asked if it's Jews because uh, Skip says that, and other people say that the Jews owned the, the slave ships. Or maybe it was, who knows who it was, who cares? Uh, hopefully they didn't die that way. Anyway, the point is, to be slaves is to live and work. Uh, let's, say, let's say it again, says this dumb liberal meme. Libs can't meme, am I right? Studying history will sometimes disturb you. Emotional words, right? Studying history will sometimes upset you. Studying history will sometimes make you furious. This picture is supposed to make blacks mad. And it works for some of them. 
They're such blind suckers. Uh, if studying history always makes you feel proud and happy, you probably aren't studying history. It's so stupid. Everybody has seen this, this, uh, picture. I remember seeing it, I think, when I was a kid. I'm like, wow, <laughs> impressive. But, uh, yeah. Like, we really need, like, like the, like the first thing blacks need the most, really the last thing, the thing that they don't need, is to be, uh, fed a bunch of propaganda to make them angry. And whites need, uh, propaganda to make them falsely, uh, what is that called? Ashamed. Dumb, huh? Let me get back into Odyssey. I want to be able to see my super chats and stuff, guys. I'm so happy, uh, Nick fixed the stuff. Nick and Chris. I, uh, I know some of, some of, some people are one-man shows. I don't know. Imagine me trying to do that. What a mess. <laughs> okay, uh, anyway, that's that for that. Oh, should I play the clip? Let me play the clip of this guy, since we have it. Um, can you tell which one it is supposed to be? E yes. Clip 12. Here, this is Mr. Daniel Buck talking to the people. Listen to this. <laughs> Look, Twitter, I'm about to drive home. Um, but I keep seeing this take, uh, critical race theory is not in schools, it's all a Republican lie, it's gaslighting, blah, 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 blah. Okay, critical race theory, critical pedagogy, all of it, not just critical race theory, but critical pedagogy is in schools. It's, um, to suggest otherwise is patently false. Um, Gloria Latson Billings in the 1990s wrote a paper, what is critical race theory doing in a nice field like education? Okay, in the 90s. Um, yep. Kimberly Crenshaw uh, wrote another scholarly article about uh, celebrating 20 years of critical race theory. And in it, she says critical race theory has worked its way into um, all sorts of different fields, including philosophy, economics, and uh, education. Um, <laughs> Paulo Freire, not a critical race theorist, but he is a critical pedagogue, or pedagogue, is one of the most assigned texts in schools of education, okay? Are students reading Richard Delgado, a critical race theorist in high school classrooms? No, but the language, the theory, the philosophy, the application, the arguments, the policies of critical theory in general, not just critical race theory, are worked into every part of schooling right now, okay? It starts in the academy and then it leaks on to everything else there are interesting discussions to be had about whether or not a high school student could learn about critical theory like they learn about communism or capitalism okay um these are debates that we can have but we got to start from a place of truth which is that critical theory is in k-12 education okay um i'm a teacher make sure to follow this uh not a lot of people are saying this a lot of teachers are, but I know other people are thinking it. So make sure to retweet, like, and follow. Um, have a great day. I'm going to go play with my dog now that the workday's done. Nice. And so he's not that cons- well, I don't know. I don't know how conservative he is. But he's telling the plain truth. Because people are just lying about it. The mainstream media. Liars! Anyway, guys, let me get to a call. It's- Nine, tw almost nine thirty here. Felipe in Sacramento, California, wants to comment on this. What's up, Felipe? Hey, good morning, brother. How are you? Morning, fine. How are you? Uh, very well, sir. Thank you for asking. Um, yeah, to get to this critical race theory um, propaganda that the left is promoting, these communists. Um, let me tell you, man. I'm half Mexican and half white. And uh, I never once seen a day of white privilege a day in my life. Like, what are they talking about? Yeah. Uh, like, <laughs> it's outrageous, man. Yep. Uh, dude, yeah. Anyway, I called Jesse's show earlier today, uh, told him my story. But Nice. Yeah. Well, anyway, I appreciate it, man. But, but uh, yeah, dude, it, it's crazy. And then um, I also saw on Netflix that uh, Colin Kaepernick, he has a um, Netflix show. 
Oh yeah, and Colin Kaepernick. He's that. Yeah, dude. he's that light skin. He's a mixed, adopted, uh, whatever he, whatever he is. Yeah, yeah. And he was adopted by a white family in Turlock, California, and he was played for. He was a quarterback for the Niners, and I'm a Niner fan. But yeah. Anyway, um, so anyway, the opening of the first five minutes, he compares the. The combine, the combine hires NFL players based on their abilities, and you get paid millions of dollars once you sign a contract. Yeah, and he compared that to race, uh, to slavery. <laughs> and I'm like, how can you compare that to slavery? I know it's like, ridiculous. That's ridiculous. They're getting paid millions of dollars. Yeah. Yes, they have to check their physique out. Of course, I'm not going to pay you forty million dollar contract right. if you're not fit. Yep. No, he's you know what I mean? he's silly. Yeah, that's it's so ridiculous. Funny. I oh, so phony. Such I have I've so had funny. those clips for a few days, and I've hesitated to play. Them. Well, yesterday I couldn't even play anything. I hesitated to play them because well, I know that Ben Shapiro played it and Crowder played it, but I don't know. Yeah. But it's well, a mess. The, you get the point, though, dude. Come on, man. This guy's such a poser. Teams. I'm not going to pay you a million of dollars if you're not. He was adopted and raised by white parents, and yet he tries to talk black. I wonder if he yes, grew up, yes. maybe he grew up around blacks, though. And so that's why, where he picked up the black talk. No, he didn't. You know what it was? <laughs> okay. You know what it was? It was six years ago he got this uh, girlfriend who was a you went to high school POC, quote-unquote, <laughs> and this lady turned him into a police-hating yeah, his girlfriend uh, is an Egyptian uh, Muslim SJW stupid woman. Yeah, DJ. She turned him over. She, yeah, she she flipped him. Yeah. Isn't that always the way? These interracial people, not always, yeah. but so many times these interracial dating people, they get influenced yeah. for the worst. It's not. It's not that uh, the the uh, worst one gets influenced for the better. The better yeah. the person who's like was raised better. Or actually, probably not raised better, honestly, because that's why she fell for him, uh, or he fell right. for her. Fall, fall in with the worst one, like the people who marry a black. So often right. they'll fall for the the fake idea of racism, and they'll get overly defensive about their relationship and all that mess. And yeah, it's all it a is, bunch of mess. yeah. So people end up people end up getting worse after coming together with people. Oh, dude. Oftentimes. I, oh, yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah, man. But uh, also, like, so um, I have, uh, I, I talked to you the other day. Uh, I put a bunch of F words out. I apologize. For oh, that. I accept your apology. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Philly Bay, Sacramento. Uh, anyway, uh, my nieces, I got four nephews and I got two nieces. And my nieces, one of them, I was talking to her and she was, they were teaching her socialism in her um, school. She's fourteen years old. Yeah. And no, these people we were, are. These people are evil. Yeah. I, 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 my brother, he was like, "Dude, you talk to her," and I was like, "Why?" He's like, "They taught her things of socialism in her school," and I was like, "Oh God." No, man. You're, so your brother—that's your niece—and your brother wants yeah, you, you to niece. talk to her. Yeah. Yeah. You. Tell her, man. Like, so I try. He, so your brother like, can't tell I, his own daughter. Yeah, he's weak. He's soft, dude. He's beta. I know, but he—that's how he gets tougher. Is to <laughs> tell the truth to your daughter. <laughs> how much strength is it? It's how much? Fine. Hey, uncle. Even uncle betas Felipe can talk to their it. own daughters. What in the world? <laughs> how old is this girl uncle again? Felipe, uh, my niece is fourteen. Aw. Yeah, she's cute, button. anyway, <laughs> um, but yeah. So I explained to her how don't go down that path. right socialism does not work. It's proven. Right. Yeah, true. The most famous socialist party on the planet was the Nazi Socialist Party in Germany. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, and look how that went down. <laughs> yeah, it didn't go down well, did it? Uh, no, it did not. <laughs> much worse even still, perhaps, the commies. Those are right. global. The globalist socialists are pure evil. It's based on. Oh a, yeah. Oh, most definitely. Yeah, they are. Communism is based, and socialism in general, I think, is based on the idea 
uh, correct me if I'm wrong, guys, but I learned this from the great Bill Lockwood. Yeah. That it's based on an atheistic uh, mindset of, oh, poverty causes crime. If only these people had more money, they would quit committing these crimes. Right. So give them more money. Give me a break. And and not just that, James Haig, uh, they have a beehive mentality of like, it's a beehive. We're all... Uh, uh, as one in this collective of yeah of, exactly of, 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 you know what I mean like the collective that's not is the way... more important than yeah. the individual so you can do anything you want so that's why they justify vaccine deaths they don't care who it kills yeah they don't Dude, care who it kills insane. because it's for the greater good yeah, yeah no uh, I like my individual rights I like if my those vaccine deaths freedom. happen I don't know anyway you know what they I mean? don't care who they hurt who they kill no who's, they who, don't who gets violated or anything because they don't believe in God. In my, they don't my, believe in right my, and wrong. They believe in their ideology. My brother keeps asking me to, uh, well, anyway, my nieces need to get vaccinated. And I'm like, no, don't do it. They're young. Like, right. Yeah. I mean, no, don't do yeah, it. I agree. Anyway, man, it's good to hear from you. All right. Hey, uh, you have a great day, sir. I'm glad I didn't let any F words slip out today. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Don't keep bringing it up, though. <laughs> you don't have to. Right, you don't have to remind people of your wrongs, because people forget. And then I, I had forgotten about it. <laughs> now you're bringing up. Now you're bringing up painful memories. Oh, hey. Uh, <laughs> uh, can you say one thing to Nick for me? Uh oh. Where, where do I order the uh, oh, okay. uh, picture so I could put on my um, mantle? <laughs> so you want to put a picture of Nick on your mantle? I yeah. don't know if he has his store set up yet. Okay. Yeah, but I'll pass that question along. All right. All right. Thank you, Felipe. I appreciate you, man. <laughs> All right, man. You guys have a great day, man. You too. Take care. Um, before I get back to calls, I do have lots of calls coming in, actually, guys. 888-775-3773. Tony coming up in California. <laughs> Prepare yourself. Um, but first, and by the way, this, um, let's see, did I do this? By the way, this guy who you heard, who, you know, he might be slightly effeminate, whatever. This Daniel Buck guy, nice guy. Honest, as far as teachers go. Called himself a conservative teacher. Um... Wrote, wrote, denying CRT in the American mind, the left is playing dumb with the ubiquity of its radical ideology in our schools. I told you about that already. But it turns out that he is for something called school choice, which I've tended to support. You know, like, because I grew up, my dad seemed to be for it, and I believe JLP is for it. Vouch- is school vouchers the same as school choice? Basically... The, the children are able to go to any old school that they, their mother or father, parents should be, send them to. That way the failing schools don't keep on getting funded just because there's heads in schools. That's why the schools and the uh, teachers unions, they support the illegals coming in. Because that's more heads, you know, more, per capita, right? Per head, per person. More people in their seats means more money from the uh, funding from the state and sometimes the feds. And I'm not for that. That's corrupting. That's why we liked Prop 187 here in California. We voted. Well, I didn't vote. I was too young to vote at that point. It was in the 90s, I think, or something. Prop 187 back in the 90s said no welfare, no social services for illegal aliens. Including education. But no, we have to give them education. It's so corrupt. It's for the money. And also, there's all kinds of corrupt uh, motivations for keeping illegals here. And they get money. They get votes. And it's just evil. And they get to brainwash the people and and just corrupt corrupt the country, subvert the country. But anyway, uh, so that's partly why I really don't... Well, that's just a separate issue, kind of. So this guy, Daniel, the same guy, Daniel Buck, tweeted out, I'm a teacher, and I support school choice. Did I include this clip? I don't even know if I included this clip. Anyway, he was saying it's, 
it's just makes more sense to him. Trump was for it. Obama was against it. Uh, I remember o Bill O'Reilly interviewed Obama a couple of times during like the Super Bowl or something. And Obama's like, it didn't work. And so it tends to be the liberals who are against school choice and the conservatives are for it. But I'm not sure if I'm for this because you're redistributing. Basically how it works, this guy explained, is you live in a rich neighborhood. Your property taxes go and help fund the schools. That's what Destiny told JLP when Destiny was interviewed by JLP on The Fallen State. He said, your property taxes go to fund the schools. Well, that means the people in the poorer areas, the, those schools are less well-funded, right? Well, then you have the people, the white people, who go into the beautiful suburbs and the more well-to-do, more whitewashed, if you will, <laughs> the more Americanized, the more well-to-do POCs also go into the suburbs, and they have nice suburban schools, pa parents raising their children right, they're married in most cases, sometimes divorced, but they're doing pretty well, at least financially on a physical level, and then their, their schools are mostly peaceful. Well, and then you go to the so-called poor schools, poor comes from poor morals, and crime also comes from poor morals. So you have poor morals, criminal kids fighting with each other. That's why you had to have those black dads come and dads on duty and stop the black kids from fighting each other. So phony. You want those black kids who are fighting everybody to go into their schools? I don't know if I'm for this school choice thing. <laughs> if that's what it's going to mean. Yikes. Or no. There was this dumb male named Covington EDU said private schools can and do discriminate against students, families, and hiring teachers based on sexual orientation and religion. Like that's a bad thing. What a sucker. That's a male saying that. What is equitable about this? And he shares a screenshot of the writing on school choice. I think I might have this screenshot at least. Congress has never enacted civil rights protections based on sexual orientation. As a result, private schools are not required to admit LGBT students, thank God, or LGBT parents, or hire LGBT ch teachers, children of LGBT parents. Good! At least under federal law, states can institute their own so-called protections. But Maryland is the only state that has prohibited private schools from participating in school choice programs from discriminating on the basis of so-called sexual orientation. What a disgusting bunch of statements, huh? Religion. Religiously controlled private schools are allowed to consider religion on admission decisions. A handful of states' choice programs, including one in D.C., Washington, D.C., requires participating private schools to admit students regardless of religion. That is evil. Just sub subversive. I mean, so many Christians are fake nowadays. Oh, yeah, I'm a Christian. I'm also a communist. Stupid. I, usually they don't admit that they're commies. They don't even realize that they are. Useful idiots, am I right? Jewish schools can under, are under no obligation to consider Catholic or Muslim teachers, though. For uh, hiring. There was this blog that was praised by Rachel Maddow. And a bunch of other libs. Called Eclecta Blog. The truth about school choice was in 2016 article by Mitchell Robinson who tweeted under this under this Daniel Buck guy who's a music education professor, public school activist. He him his. He put his pronouns like a like a LGBT person, like a not morally straight person. He said, "We have school choice in Michigan thanks to Betsy DeVos, that's Trump's education secretary. It's been an unmitigated disaster. School choice is a false choice." Yeah, like, we're going to believe the truth about school choice from a leftist. I don't think so. Another dumb female, Vision Over Fear, apparently tweeted eight times, Deborah Nevin. And she shared this cringy meme. You've probably seen this cringy meme about equality, equity, justice. And it has, like, these kids, these three children of various height watching a game. 
supposedly watching a soccer game and they're standing all on a each standing on the same soapbox for the equ- equality version Everyone gets the same benefits and the same support. This is equal treatment, but the short kid is not tall enough for that box to put him high enough to be able to see uh, to see over the fence. And so they change it to equity. No help for the tall guy. A little help for the shorter girl. And a lot of help for the short, shorty guy. Everyone gets support they need. This is the concept of affirmative action, thus producing equity. Stupid, huh? And then they, they have this fake one, justice. A fake version of justice. All three can see the game without supports or accommodations because the cause of the inequity was addressed. It's a systemic barrier has been removed. Females, huh? Female logic. She's all, I will end my diatribe with this. Apparently she tweeted eight times, but not in a thread. Because she's probably a boomer. Almost as dumb as me. Maybe dumber. Please continue to dream about making schools better and becoming the best teacher you can. You're just starting out, and I'm about to end year 39. See? She's a boomer. Or maybe Gen X, old Gen X. You are the new voice, the next change maker. We need you. I urge you to flip the script for all. And she shares this meme. What a joke. Women with their fake positivity. She's a snake. Anyway, that's that for that. Let me get to your friend. It is your friend, Tony in California. Tony, what's up? Good morning, Hank. Hey. Hank report. La la la. How you been? Fine. How about you? I'm doing wonderful, my friend. I see you got a new haircut. Indeed. And, and, and your hairline, man. How old are you, man? Are I'm you, 40. How old are you? Hey, your hair has disappeared, brother. No, it's not. It's still there. It's still there. Oh, yeah. You're just blind. You gotta, you're just blind. You just, you just, you gotta, you gotta did you see my hair hairline. before? I, Tony, did you see my hair before I cut it? It's very no, much well, there. Yeah. It's very much there. Oh. Well, you seem like you're going bald a bit, brother. You know, well, that's hairline. because you're blind. You can't see. Okay, you and okay. You and Merle are a couple of blind people. I don't know who Merrill is. Oh, yeah. But, you know, He's just like you. He's black on but the inside, three. but white on the outside. Uh, no, we're not. Uh, He's full I, of I'm hatred. Just white. like you. I, I, no, I, I don't have no hatred in me. Sir. Oh, I yeah. Just, you, yeah just, you're full of hatred. I lo- you don't even think that color. white people are human. This guy doesn't think whites are human. Well, <laughs> well, the thing he knows is, that I, we I are. Story, but... I, got a, I got another story for you, for you and your white folks. Why do white folks embezzle and steal from and trick people. You got this Christian guy out of Dallas. Texas. Same reason blacks do. No, Greed. we don't do no stealing like that. Oh, yeah, you <laughs> we do. Oh, we don't, yes, we don't, you do. We don't get on yes, live you do. radio oh, no. and become Christian. Oh, we blacks don't steal. People we go, we go invest your money in Blacks don't invest steal like that. that. <laughs> yeah, they do. Take $32 million from people. No, it's a fact. They do. do what, oh, no. no oh, no. Bro. Given the no. chance... I know that it's it's tougher for them to because they don't really have the same capabilities usually uh, to, to get into the white we, collar jobs. We, but we per are capita, honest people. per we capita, are honest people. Oh yeah, you're real honest, buddy. We are honest. No, you're people, not. We don't what dupe, a joke. We don't do people out their money like like Christians, white Christians do their people. You have no idea what people you're talking lose, about. Lo- people losing their trust funds, they lose their savings account, they lose their retirement plan. To a Christian. Oh, cry me a river. I don't understand cry why me a river. Do each other like that. You don't why care do about do, anybody. Why do, why do y'all do each other like that? Who's y'all? A, I mean, why? I understand y'all believe in capitalism. Who's y'all? Why y'all who's so y'all? greedy? Why are y'all so greedy? Who's why, y'all? Why do y'all? Who's do, y'all? You know who y'all is. You know who y'all is. Who is y'all? <laughs> you, know who, you know who y'all, who's y'all? is. <laughs> why do y'all steal from who's each other like that? And, and, and tricky. Stuff. All right, I'm, I'm gonna go, Tony. If you're not gonna answer the question, you white folks, white folks. Finally, he answers it. White folks. Oh, so oh. white folks steal and blacks don't. Blacks are honest. Yeah. What a That's joke, right. Tony. And, and, and we, and we tell you're you a clown. Do something with your money. And we Tony, tell you gonna do something. I gotta go. He's not. He's not. Doesn't want to have a conversation. Equity made Hank shave his beard off because most men can't grow amazing beards. <laughs> you know, that's the other reason why I wonder. 
I gotta get to Super Chats, guys. Uh, I just chuckling at Equity make ha- made Haig shave his beard off because most men can't grow amazing beards. Was my beard amazing? I don't know. It was alright. It was cool. Um, but... I was wondering about those black Hebrew Israelite things. You know those things? Calling to my show. <laughs> Is it wrong to call them things? They talk like, uh, like they're the true Israelites, right? But a lot of these people in the Bible, like there was a verse about something running down someone's beard. Like when they're anointed with oil and the oil runs down this guy's beard. Uh, it's only because of, I suspect, (laughs) correct me if I'm wrong, it's it's kind of, I'm being a little silly here, but I think that it's white blood that allows blacks to even grow beards. White blood. Because black Africans, they don't usually have beards, do they? They don't tend to shave, but they don't really grow those beards so much. Huh. Same with the American Indians. They don't tend to grow those beards, and they, they claim that the American Indians, unless they have white blood in them. Because you, have you ever seen it? Most of those Indians are pretty clean face. And it's not like they're shaving. The Redskins logo, it's a, it's a, uh, a warrior, an Indi- Indian warrior, Indian, not to be confused with India, Indian, American Indian, warrior, clean face. They don't grow the beards unless they have the white blood. So, what is all that mess? Anyway. (laughs) Uh, Brandon M. also says he still owes me a a few thousand dollars because Tony claimed he was going to pay rent if, uh, if Brandon, or if any listener or anyone could say where the bones are buried of these different apostles and stuff, and I think Brandon M. said he knew where Paul or Peter was supposedly buried, or something like that. I don't remember. But yeah, he doesn't, he doesn't pay up. He's not an honest person. He's an embezzler. I wonder if he, has, if he got that from the white blood that's inside of him. <laughs> and white blood inside of uh, Colin Kaepernick, but yet he's smearing his own ancestors. Ridiculous. I love the Redskins logo, too. Yeah. Some Super Chats, guys. Fabrietz says Tony should be banned until his debt is paid. Yeah, fair enough. I should ask him every time. I wouldn't hold your breath, though. Fabrietz also gave us Super Chats over there on Odyssey. Great JLP throwbacks on Prop 187. Yeah, that's what refreshed my memory on it. Um, remember JLP's 90s episodes? There are some on Prop 187. And they were some great throwbacks from his 90s TV show. Very cool. Copycat Ninja, shout out Copycat Ninja over there on Odyssey. Hake, what do you think about the whole alpha female thing? Do you think females can be alpha? I'm still not convinced. An alpha female, I like the idea. That's a female who is an actual woman and, and plays the role of the woman. Fulfills the role of a woman. I think that's cool. And they think more, start to think more like men. That's, that is to say, actually logically, rather than uh, woman logic like what you see in the world. I saw this tweet, it was retweeted by Cernovich and another person, a friend of mine, sent it to me. Of this person who plays like he plays on Twitter like he is this nine-year-old or something and said something like what do you say English teacher told us to write something controversial and creative I got an F and have to meet with a counselor says Tom Tommy the carbon kid and it's his little creative and controversial statement Reads, the blackest pill, it is a beautiful sci-fi trope, the alien planet, the alien ship, the alien force that is not just baroquely intertwined with itself, but it is the physical manifestation of alien consciousness, cables as neurons, access shafts as gyral interstices, 
and a uh, brooding consciousness imminent in all. Well, here is the blackest pill. Modern woke society, he says. Its institutions and interrelationships, its ritualized confrontations and convulsions. It's like, oh, Chris said the N-word. We got to cancel him. Ah, oh, get up. <clears throat> Which I don't know if Chris ever said the N-word. <laughs> Just kidding. I know whether he did or not. Um, hysterias and contradictions. That's the confrontations and convulsions. Oh, we got to end this guy. Uh, oh, Trump said the truth about the people coming across the border. Oh, Trump said that Israel used to control Congress, and now they don't. <laughs> he said st- stuff like that, right? Um, does not merely bear the scent of femininity in its wake, all that madness. It doesn't just bear the scent of femininity in its wake. It literally is the female mind, reified, meaning shown, I think is what it means. This guy has a big vocabulary. I don't understand all the words. He said it is the female mind in, uh, on display, basically, he's saying. Today's high horsepower intellectual jousting. You know, all these people saying, well, actually, let's have a debate. Uh, no, you can't argue with a woman. No, you can't argue, as JLP says, with an angry person. No, you, it's like arguing with a drunk person, Jesse Lee Peterson says. And he's... <laughs> It plays out. It's right. It's man. That's wisdom, right? Never try to argue with a Bible thumper. You're just sp- spinning your wheels. Somebody said, never argue with a stupid person. They'll pull you up down to their level and beat you with, uh, with experience. Something like that. That's a cringy version of, of what JLP is saying. I shouldn't have even repeated it. Today's high horsepower intellectual jousting with this or that latest expression of the woke absurdity is all just charging at the red cape, not noticing the truth standing next to it. Like the bullfighter, the bullfighter holds the red cape and the idiot right wingers, the uh, intellectual right wingers, are going after the cape rather than the, the evil person holding it. <laughs> Interesting, huh? We allowed society to organize itself. Oh, yeah. Not noticing the truth standing next to it. We allowed society to organize itself in the form of a Rube Goldberg machine, instantiating female logic. Whatever that means. But I like the female logic word. And since its logic gates don't work on Boolean principles, I guess that's real principles, I'm not sure. No rationalist think piece, however crushing, however inarguable, will ever quell the convulsing electrical storms. That's what it's like arguing with... Tony from California. It, it doesn't matter how much truth you tell him. He's not going to listen. And, uh, and I, you can almost respect that about the blacks because they will just keep on pushing. They don't care. They don't care. They'll keep on pushing with their lies and make the truth teller get frustrated <laughs> if they're trying to convince them. What a mess, huh? Same thing with the woman. Same thing with this, uh, these commies. The truth doesn't matter to them. They don't care about the truth. Please, you're treating them like they care about the truth. Suck, you're the sucker. Anyway, thank you. What, what made me think of that? I forget what made me think of that. But thank you, uh, yeah, alpha females thing. Bibby42 gave a super chat, or two, or th- three, almost. Don't want to put words in your mouth, Hakes, is Bibby42 on streamlabs.com slash the Hake Report. And we're coming up to the end of the hour. I will get to... More of your calls after this break. But, uh, don't want to put words in your mouth, Hake, says Bibby42. But didn't you call this Glenn Youngkin guy a rhino? He was the CEO of the Carlisle Group, who was a player in the 2020 Dominion voting system. You may have been spot on, James. Wow. Something to look into. Glenn Youngkin was the CEO of the Carlisle Group, which was a player in the 2020 Dominion voting system mess, according to Bibi42. Look into it. Let me know if that's correct, guys. I mean, Bibi42 is pretty much an honest witness. But I had not heard that. That's interesting. Yeah, uh, actually, Matt living the dream and other people. Uh, Midge, remember Fog, Shit- Fog-, Fog City Midge? I almost said a bad word by accident. By accident, guys. Fog City Midge. She's on IG. She's writing that anti-white movie or, or 
helping produce that anti-white movie you may have heard about. And uh, almost got her on the JLP show, at a, or m- maybe my show. An intern was helping me out, and he, he's how I found out about it. Shout out to that intern. Said that all that this voting thing, they had the mail-in voting, they had the late voting, they had the early voting, all this just wide open mess. And Matt, the American said they put on a show to p- put in a rhino and then we accept this voting madness and it's all a show wake up hey break out of the matrix he said <laughs> interesting point don't be all happy that oh just because the democrat lost who's been around forever terry mcauliffe mcauliffe i kept on calling him a rhino who's not much better i saw that he's like fighting anti-semitism what about this anti-whiteism? How about the actual hatred? Anyway, BB42 says, Also, what Linkin Park song are you feeling like today, Hake? You look ready to break into crawling or maybe in the end. <laughs> Hake's tried so hard and gone so far. <laughs> but in the end, I'm going to play Suffering and the Hideous Thieves, guys. Let's play some more Suffering and the Hideous Thieves. I actually really like this song. It may have been my favorite song at the time that I was listening to this album a lot. My Black Heart Infection. It's from 2002 album, which was recorded in 01, 2000, 2001. Um, Real Panic Formed on Velvet Blue Music. It's Jeff Suffering, the, guy, the singer or vocalist uh, from 90 Pound Wuss. Went on to do Suffering and the Hideous Thieves. I hope you enjoy it, guys. Oh, actually... I think I should talk you guys through it. Can you turn it on and put on the video but have me down in the lower right corner? Uh, Because I think I should stay with you guys and talk you through the first two and a half minutes or so. Because it's kind of not a lot happening. Right? So, (laughs) let me know when you're ready. And uh, we'll go with that. Um, Emperor of Cats says, time to go. (laughs) I don't know if it has to do with the music. Okay, here is, what did I just call this? My Black Heart Infection. It's about a messed up relationship and you're not supposed to put the woman as God, guys. But apparently this guy did that. Um, My Black Heart Infection by Suffering and the Hideous Thieves. And I'll talk you through the beginning of it. And I'll take a break during the fun part of the song. And I'll come back towards the end. Enjoy my black heart infection. There it is. Hake's music is not morally straight as blank. (laughs) Uh, That's what random dude says on, I'm cleaning up his language. I will get to your calls, guys, in about eight minutes after this song is over. Gotta talk me down from the ledge, (laughs) says War Eagle. Boy, wasn't the beginning of the show rough. Bible thumpers are the worst. They're like zombies, says O.D. Red Skull. Kind of spooky, kind of a... Kind of like a haunted house. How does Jesse allow this? (laughs) Sounds like it could be emo says Berlin. Suffering in the hideous thieves, guys. Boomers, rest easy. Eight minutes, what the? (laughs) Hey, I'm waving to you guys in the video. Yeah, this is what Hake listens to while handing out Halloween candy. (laughs) 
Hank on va backup vocals. Well, the fun part's about to start, and I'll take a quick break in the meantime. I think you'll like it, some of you. Orchestral music, guys. All right. Just leaves us with this mess. What the? <laughs> I'm alone. Skip says the band is so broke, they had to write the words instead of type them. Scribble out their mistakes. He's saying mind, body, soul, infection. So it happens. The woman is God, guys. What happens? <laughs> Berlin said heartbreak is like surviving Nam for emo guys. <laughs> Listen to this garbage.
This music sounds like Daddy didn't love on them. <laughs> uh. No, I'm not on backup vocals. My black heart infection. Have you noticed I've only put, made you put up with one song per day from Suffering in the Hideous Thieves? I bet it's better with earphones, says Jim Justice. Yeah, it's great. Well, guys, thank you for bearing with me through that. I truly enjoyed it. But... We got to get back to calls. It's 10, 12 now, guys, here in Los Angeles. Let me get quickly to Chad in Alberta, Canada. Chad, thank you for holding on there. How are you doing? I'm doing well, James. Nice. How are you, how are you doing? Doing fine, too. Thank you. <laughs> Excellent. Yeah, I'm calling about this socialism garbage. Yeah. Uh, I had my daughter last weekend, uh -huh. and... She was supposed to go to a birthday party, but she didn't have her schoolwork done, so I didn't let her go. <laughs> nice. She, she spent the entire weekend trying to answer one question. Oh, really? What? Yeah. Um, what's the difference between equality and equity? Oh, gosh. Oh, my goodness. It was terrible, James. Like, it, trying to explain to her what those terms mean. Show her the meme. <laughs> Just kidding. So what do they mean? <laughs> no, I said show her the meme. I don't know if you were watching the video, my video feed earlier, but I shared this, this cringy woman who, tweet from this cringy woman who shared a meme that equity is when you treat them, you treat some better than others because those people that you're treating better had a harder time in life and so they need more help. Right. It's ridiculous. Yeah, it was. Um, I don't. I don't know if you know what's going on in Canada here. I know in Alberta, uh, teachers don't teach anymore. Everything's done on computers. Is the caller loud so, enough, guys? Is stay I mean, close to your phone, Chad. I am close to my phone. Okay, cool. Everything's done on computers, so they don't use pencil and paper anymore. Well, it's like the teachers there to help them work through the, what they call modules. Modules? Like, now uh, you're breaking up. Yeah. What the heck? Sorry, man. I'm not on a Bluetooth or anything. Okay. So modules. No, probably, They're on modules? Yeah, yeah modules. Like, uh... Instead you know, of desks? Like if it's math, math, mathematics, you know, it'd be like, uh... If they're doing geometry, it'd be a package they give them. They have to read through it and answer all the questions and yeah. work through problems. But the teacher doesn't actually teach anymore. Yeah. Like, the, teach the teacher's there to help you work through the computer system. Wow. Which is insane to me. Yeah, like, right. I could do that job. I don't have a teacher's degree, but I could do that job. I know. Yeah, that's... You know? In fact, I kind of liked schools that were like that, where they just set you off to work because the textbook, for example, the math book, already has a nice, clear lesson. You read through it, and then you do the problem set, and it's reviewing the stuff yeah. that you learned and plus stuff that you learned over the, over the prior months so that you don't, don't you forget bet. the stuff that you learned. Then uh, the teacher yeah. doesn't have to do anything except help you out when you need help. I like right. that, but it sounds like it's a bunch of bogus speech that they're learning. It's, the word equity, to me, that's an accounting term. Right. I don't, and what does I that mean in used, accounting? Equity, you know, like if you have equity in your home. I've heard that, like, but I don't know like what that means. <laughs> well, it's like, let's say your house is worth $100,000, but you only owe fifty on it. Uh-huh. So you, you basically have fifty grand in equity. Okay. Right? So, anyway, it was probably the worst weekend I ever spent doing uh, schoolwork with her. Yeah. And, but... It's not the terms that I have a problem with. It's the 
case studies, what they call, right? So, uh, oh, gosh. The equity, the, the example they used was there was, a, there was a girl in Canada. She wants to play on a boys' hockey team, right? And so she has special rights. They're called individual rights in Canada. Uh-huh. It doesn't, doesn't apply to everybody. It only applies to minority groups. So um, individual rights for her was to allow her to play on a boys' team. To force the boys' team to take her on the team, right? Yeah. And that so was one of the case mind, studies? That was a case study. And my daughter was like, well, that doesn't make any sense. Like, why, why does she get to play on the boys' team? What, don't the boys have a say? And yeah. she's only 10 years old. Yeah. It, it, it's like it wasn't, it's like in, inherent, inherently she knew it was wrong. This whole idea of equity is wrong, but right. I had a really tough time trying to explain that to her. You know, and uh, why is she? Oh yeah, because you don't have a choice because you're divorced, and the mother right. is sending her to this corrupt school. Well, it, it, she has to work too. Like if we, if we were together still, then she'd be able to stay home. But uh, are you able to take her out of that school? I'm working on that. I'm trying okay. to get some land. Nice. And I told her if they force vaccines on her, on my daughter, I said, you're going to have to come live with me and live by my rules. And she she felt Why don't you it. just so, draw yeah, the okay. line now and just bring them over? Bring her over. Can you do that? Do you have the power to do that? I work out of town right now. Oh, okay. If I had a, if I had a job where I was home every day, then... I'd be able to do that. I'm trying to get into farming, so I'm home all the time. Then I, I'm definitely taking her out of school. That's that, for sure. Well, yeah. that could take years, man. Who knows? Yeah, I, I know. You, but you, anyway, that's it's your life, that's your okay. daughter. I, I went into the school one time because of the sex ed, education. Yeah. And uh, I went to the, I, I spoke to the principal. I go, like, is there some way I can get the curriculum? Like, what are you teaching my daughter? And the principal goes, well, why do you need to do all that? I said, well, as a parent, I need to correct her education. And she gave me this really dirty look. I said, you're teaching my children, our children, immoral things. Right. I have to correct her. Yep. And she did not like that. Nice. You know. <laughs> Nor should so, she. It doesn't, it's not her job to like it or not. No, it's not. Evil woman. Why are these oh. females being principals now? It's weird. I always had a male principal going growing up. Yeah, me too. Me too. The um, vice principal was a female, though. Oh man, they were a pain. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Anyway, I, I'm I'm glad you and Jesse do what you do. Trying yeah. To get the truth out there, and uh, um, I miss Joel Joel there. I like Chris a lot. Nice. I think he's a really good. Uh, you no, know, he's a good replacement for Joel, but. I don't know. You, should, you guys should have them on uh, once a month or something. <laughs> well, no? thank you for the request. And something else, um, Joel, remember that Arkansas thing? Yes. <laughs> I've seen many videos of people that live in Arkansas. That's your that's your state, right? Yes. They call it Arkansas. That's funny. I I've, I've heard that many 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 times. All so, right. I think Joel was right the first time. You guys <laughs> <laughs> it's funny. I like it. Nice. I like teaching them. It's good. Well, I appreciate it, Chad. It's great to hear from you. And uh, good Thanks, luck James. with your daughter, man. Yeah, I just it's it's a constant battle, eh? Yep. <laughs> He's so Canadian. You know, especially the uh, the health health sciences, what they call it. Yeah. They call it health class. I'm not even allowed to keep my daughter home on that day. It's mandatory. You're going to have to make sacrifices and draw the line, I think. You can't be having excuses. So no, I know. I'm working on that. Or I just be to, or be a perfect example so that she knows that this stuff is a joke and she can she won't be affected and fall for it. She knows that. Are yeah. you a perfect example? Yeah, you bet. You bet. Oh, um, really? 
I, I'm trying to be a perfect example for my daughter, for sure. Trying to be or uh, are? <laughs> well, it, she kind of needs, you know, there's some things I don't want her to do, but it's kind of like, like television, for instance, right? Um, ever since I moved to Alberta, I never had cable. I decided not to do that. Nice. Um, but she's into Hannah Montana now and all that stuff. And uh, I don't know. It's kind of hard to uh, put boundaries when all the other kids are doing the same thing, right? Oh, man. Like, how do you get around that? I don't know. I didn't mind being that different because I was qu- a little bit different from all the other kids. What are you talking about? Cable? That's not an issue. I don't have cable. Right. Right. And what does uh, she want? That, was- what does she want? What that all the other kids have that you don't want to give her? A uh, cell phone for one. Nice. She doesn't have to have a cell phone. No, she doesn't. She goes, well, all my friends have a cell phone. I said, so that, and that's said, hard not, is it hard not to give that to her? No. Okay. No. But uh, the day that she comes home alone, you know, I was a latchkey kid, right? What's and that mean? My parents, never, my parents never locked the door until I was about probably 13. What's latchkey kid? I don't know what that means. I've heard it, but I don't know what it means. Oh, a latchkey, you wear a key around your neck. You use your shoelace. You put okay. the key around your neck so you would never lose it. So when you get off the bus, you go home, and you'd be able to get in the house. Okay, so you would return to an empty home after school or a child who was yeah. often left at home with no supervision. Okay. That's right. And right. from an early age, I had chores to do as soon as I got home. I had to peel potatoes, carrots, nice. whatever, you know, get the vegetables ready. So when my dad got home, he would start supper, then my mom would arrive 20 minutes later, and then we'd have supper, right? Okay. But there's no latchkey kids today. There's not? I don't think so. I think that there are, you just don't know about them. Okay. What, what's, what's the point about, you were a latchkey kid, how is that different from your daughter? She can't be independent? No, she can, but we had, uh, we had telephones at home. I had a rotary phone. Oh, okay, so you don't so, have a landline. So no. So if it were to come to, like, let's say she was coming home alone, then I probably would get her a cell phone. Oh, Whatever. Get her a flip phone. <laughs> Get her a flip phone, not a smartphone. Right. Right. Anyway, man. Good luck. All right. Love your show. Thank you. Um, doing a good job there. Shout out to Chris, too. And Nice. Even and, though you like Joel better. <laughs> yeah. No, I called Jesse, too, but he's yeah. a biblical <laughs> question. But, but, uh, right on, James. All Thanks right, Chad. Take call. care. Take care. Bye-bye. All right. Um, whew. I have more stuff to get to before I get to social pariah. He's been on hold for some time. More calls coming in. Hang tight, guys. Um, man. Oh, let me play this thing. You know how they talked about, uh, sleazy Joe Biden, the administration, was according to Mays, she claimed, oh, they're getting sued, so they're going to give these payouts, reparations, to these family, so-called families whose children were separated from their so-called parents at the border. The invaders, the illegal alien invaders, taking advantage of our fake and corrupt uh, asylum system, pretending that they're refugees when they're nothing of the sort. They're just... Uh, freeloaders and advantage takers of our weakness. Well, the evil lawyers slash liars were complaining and saying, oh, uh, we haven't, we haven't reunited enough families. Poor kids. Attorneys are still trying to reach supposed parents of 270 illegal so-called children separated at the border under Trump's zero tolerance. Policy. Remember that? This is from the far left female run out of this outlet, the skim. Sleazy Biden created a reunification task force as if he cares about putting families back together. He supports the destruction of every, the American family. Pfft, give me a break. F- only 58 children have been reu- quote unquote reunited out of 270. It looks like $450,000 reparations for those illegal families. Remember that? Remember you heard about that? Empty promises. 
Here's here's Joe Biden calling it garbage. He said that was garbage. This is a Fox News a clip from the Fox News White House reporter asking him about that. Do you have that handy? Uh, Biden denies the plan to pay migrant families separated at the border two hundred four hundred fifty thousand dollars per individual, and he calls such reports garbage. Listen to this. Uh, about the way forward, Mr. President. As you were leaving for your overseas trip, there were reports that were surfacing that your administration is planning to pay illegal immigrants who are separated from their families at the border up to $450,000 each, possibly a million dollars per family. Boy. Do you think that that might incentivize more people to come over illegally? If you guys keep sending that garbage out, yeah, but it's not true. So this is a garbage report? Yeah. Okay, so $450,000 $450, per person. Is that what you're saying? That was separated from a family member at the border under, under the last administration. That's not going to happen. So he claims. So he claims. That's from MRC Latino <laughs> Media Research Center. Uh, one of the, Brent Bozell, he's kind of a rhino. He was a Trump hater at the time. But I like his outlet, MRC Media Research Center. They put out some interesting clips. So, empty promises, but he did not get into detail about what payments they were going to give because they are still, the lawyers and the DOJ, Department of So-Called Justice, the Biden DOJ, I add, not that the Trump DOJ was really controlled by Trump or controlled by, even by the, the attorneys general who were under Trump. Because the deep state, the uh, public employees cannot all just all summarily be fired, unfortunately. So it's a bunch of people undermining Trump and supporting Biden's destruction of the, fa- of the country and families. So there is a settlement negotiations between the DOJ and the illegal aliens, lawyers slash liars. Bunch of lawyers, huh? Biden is stingy, says <laughs> Karen Williams. Yeah. So it turns out that they, that 450,000, I didn't quite believe it. And I didn't know what the details were. Mays called in and said, it's a lawsuit. They have to do it or whatever. She was pretending that it wasn't just reparations. It is reparations. It's phony reparations. Evil. So dumb. But I had to share that with you. Just so you're aware, he's denying it. But... I think that they're just, I think that they're sneaking and giving him money. <laughs> I don't know about 450000 That's That's too much. Even for the liberals, even for the communists. But they're, make no mistake, they're giving special treatment to the illegal aliens. And that's a fact, Jack. Oh, man. One more quick quick clip. I got to show this one to you. It's just so ridiculous. This is basically the perfect example. This is a black gay guy. I'm assuming that he's gay. Maybe I'm wrong for assuming. I'm wrong for assuming, I guess. But he doesn't seem morally straight whatsoever. He even indicates that he supports abortion. This black gay guy goes off on white women. This was going kind of... uh, It was kind of went sort of viral on Twitter and he's mad after the election this week in which we supposedly got rid of some Democrats it was supposedly good for the Republicans at least the rhinos and so here is uh, I saw this Cernovich shared it Mike Cernovich guy's been on the Jesse Lee Peterson show guest hosted before actually the fallen state men's conference um, He shared a video shared by Today in Tweets, and this guy who did it went private for some reason on his Twitter account, because this guy shared this on Twitter shamelessly. It's just such a poser. You know how I say all blacks are entertaining? I don't know if I would count this black guy. He's more annoying than he is entertaining, but it's like he, well, just watch this. Do you have it ready? What's that? Yeah. Uh... No, no, no. Psycho black gay. 15, clip 15. 
<laughs> I called him Psycho Black Gay. But I don't know if he's gay, okay? I'm about, I apologize because I shouldn't be saying he's gay when it's possible, there's a faint possibility that he's just moral, immoral. And that he is. And his username, by the way, under this election mess, was too real, too raw, something like that. Gross. So, listen to this. Dear white women, what the f*** is your purpose, huh? What the f*** is your purpose, huh? What the f*** is your purpose? Other than ruining the motherfucking casserole, what the f*** is your purpose other than voting against your better interests? What the f*** is your purpose other than running the motherfucking polls with expired clothes cash knowing what that shit been expired since 2010? Talk about I want to speak to your manager. I want to buy something for my Timothy. It should be so be good. It seems like every year white women just keep getting worse. Aren't they getting worse? If you look at the electorate, white women continue to vote for Republicans. Every year it keeps going up. It keeps going up. So my question is, why the f should we trust a lily white f White women can't be trusted. Well, no, Kenny, don't be so mean to them. You know, white suburban women are going to get it together. No, you're not. If you ain't got it together then, you ain't going to get it together now. Y'all didn't even vote for your own white sister Hillary. Why the f should we trust white women? And the thing that's really pissing me off is we continue to call all these white women while we keep shitting on black women. We keep shitting on black voters. But we always put all this stock into white women that are never going to show up for us. That's continue to vote against their own better interests. Because why the f***? And, when I, and this is the other shit that it pisses me off. Well, shouldn't we blame white men just as much as we blame white women? Maybe. But here's the bullshit that I have a problem with that is. I understand why white men are voting, because white men are voting for their own better interests, which is keeping power, patriarchy. It makes sense. But why the f*** a white woman think that she even has a motherfucking say? If, he, if she's constantly voting for a white man who's telling her that you don't have agency over your own fucking body. And the reason why y'all don't want to teach critical race theory is not about what's going on in the past, it's what's going on in the motherfucking present. The thing that's confusing me is how the f*** do you hide what's in motherfucking plain sight? We see your lily white racist through the motherfucking. Winner. Hi, I'm Carolyn, and I want you blackies to know that niggers in this neighborhood have curfew. Okay, so when the street lights come on, make sure you're in your home. Because if you're hanging, you will be swinging. Let's keep it a hundred. Let's keep it a buck. The real reason why these white people don't want their kids to learn about critical race theory is because they don't want their kids to grow up knowing that their parents are f***ing monsters. Every f***ing day, you guys wake up early in the morning and look yourself in the mirror, and you know you ain't shit. You know you're a racist piece of shit. And you don't want your kids to know that you're a fucking monster. And the difference between me and these other niggas is guess what? I don't give a shit about telling you, bitch. Crazy. Oops, I forgot to bleep that last one. I don't know if you were able to follow that because he talks too fast and then he like edited it together to be like to get rid of the pauses. And sometimes the pauses are important so that you can. Take a moment to comprehend what we, what he just said. You guys are claiming that I... <laughs> anyway. Not morally straight, that's for sure. Not moral. Not moral. But he's claiming that... Oh yeah, whites are racist. <laughs> it's one of the most anti-white things that I've heard. But that's basically what the mainstream media thinks. And yeah, let me play that, uh, Van Jones thing. My, fi my finder is going haywild again. Haywire again. Listen to Van Jones talking his mess about this rhino guy. He compares him to a disease. <laughs> Listen, I think I have, I think that's what it is. Listen to this. When this election is over in Virginia, we will know, have we seen the emergence of the Delta variant of Trumpism? The Delta variant of Trumpism. In other words, Yunkin, uh, same disease, but spreads a lot faster and can get a lot more places. What a psycho, huh? Pretending that there's something wrong with Trump. He's calling it Trumpism. Trumpism. Something wrong with Trump. There was nothing wrong with Trump. Van Jones is a communist, by the way, or was a communist. I think he still is. A commie capitalist. Commie capitalist. I think that's fairer. Because he wants, he's a, green, he's a green energy mess type of a guy. Green is the new red. 
if you're not familiar already. And then he turned around and, and pretended that, oh, Democrats are coming off as annoying and out of touch. They have become moralizing and self-righteous. But then he, around, he turns around and says that. Isn't that also dehumanizing, pretending that uh, racism is, is a real thing? You're dehumanizing the racists. So pathetic. These people. So evil, huh? Uh, speaking of the rhinos, let me get to a call. A caller who wants to talk about rhinos. Social pariah, man. How are you doing? Pariah. Social pariah, are you there? To come off mute. Come off mute. Social pariah, I believe, is a Gen Xer, so you have to cut him some slack. And he's just disconnected. What a mess. <laughs> so, I guess, I guess that's that. Let me quickly get to a super chat, and then I will get back to calls, guys. Hang tight. Ledge Klinger says, Hank, Tony is a mental slave and a snake. Treat him as such. I here be here. I hereby declare Tony's new mental slave slavery name, Toby, forever hereafter. Well, thank you, Ledge Klinger. I appreciate the support. And yeah, I think I do agree with that. I think I agree. Very nice. Um, let me get to Donning Armor in California. Donning Armor, thank you for holding. What's up? Hey, I hope you're doing well, buddy. Doing well, yes, All thank right. you. Is my sound coming in okay? I understand yeah. that it wasn't coming in very well. Okay, wonderful. Coming in great. Um, awesome. Uh, I just wanted to talk about, well, I wanted your take on individualism versus communalism, and I will just qualify that by saying uh, it seems that yourself, as well as Jesse, you promote this notion that Excuse me. That um, you know, you're 18 years old now, kid. Uh, go out, go away, do your own thing, and a separation of the family. I tend to subscribe to the the uh, the notion that families should stick together as much as possible. Um, but what's your take on it? Uh, so. What do you mean by families should stick together as much as possible? Even after, like, a grown adult, adult son or daughter st- hanging around his, his parents and keeping in touch with his siblings if he has them, um, uncles and aunts, grandparents, that type of thing? Extended family? Yes. As, Being tight? As, as, as closely as they possibly can. Um, I think the closer the better. Uh... Huh. I don't know. I don't really have an opinion, a strong opinion on that. I know that that can be a trap for many. You'll see Armenians, for example, who do that, or the, sometimes the Asians do that. And I, even uh, every, every, even in my family, except for everyone except for white people, seem to do it, and they they um, they seem to be successful at it. I, 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 it's only white people. I think it's the pioneering spirit of uh, whites, especially white Americans. Right. Uh, like when you're your own man, now you go on and you make your own family, but it doesn't seem to be... Um, we're not producing like the other races. In fact, we're in decline. That's a separate issue, in my opinion, than not having babies. Do you think that you think that if we were to stay together in our extended families as whites, um, that would encourage us to have more babies? Why? Because is that what you're saying? Uh, yeah. Well, I, I believe that um, we chase the almighty dollar a little bit too much, perhaps, and this notion that you know you you are you've come of age, so hit the road, Jack. I mean, uh, Jesse's got his story where what his grandma said something to the effect of, I don't know where you're going, but right. you can't stay here. Yeah. And, and, yeah, okay, that's fine. My father left his family when he left England when he was 16 and came to the United States. Uh, and But 
once he got himself settled and purchased a house, the first thing, one of the first things that he did was had his parents brought over here from England and they live with us. I, I was raised with my grandmother and grandfather. And, uh, it seems that the more wealth that you accrue, it, it doesn't necessarily lead to a happier life. Uh, for instance, the, you're mixing up two different things though. You're, you're claiming that it's a, all about money, this independence thing, but that's not true. A lot of times the people who stay together with their families, that's all about money. They're financially dependent on each other. The, oh, that can happen. I mean, there, there will be problems. Uh, there, there's problems, you know, everywhere. And I, and I agree with you to a certain extent on that. In point. fact, that's the, that's one of the that's one of the main excuses for children staying home past eighteen. We're saving more. I'm saving more money that way. That's what the mother tells them, and they they f- fall in line with that. And in many circumstances, that is the case. Yeah. However. It can also be the case that um, with those bonds of kith and kin, you know, family and friends sticking together can help you get ahead. At least it seems to be doing the trick here in Southern California. Mexicans do it. Yeah, the Asians do it, too. They they pack like sardines in these houses, and then they're yep. all, they're all working. And then they pay off that and, house and buy another one and another one and another one. It's pretty, uh, yeah, absolutely. it's pretty clever. Well, those are the ones so, who are poor who come here. The rich ones come here and pay cash, which should not be allowed, I don't think. They buy well, up all of our properties. You. I don't know about you, but I'm not rich. <laughs> I'm talking about the rich Asians who come, yeah, I know. The rich Asians who come in here and buy up our land with yeah, cash. Yeah, they certainly do, and, and they tend to be much more family-oriented. Um, and white people have this the spirit. And I'm not saying that it's um, wrong. I'm just saying that I'm looking at uh, these different families. Yeah. Uh, these different these different races, and some of them are um, they're reproducing at higher rates, and they're gaining more wealth. I mean, in particular, Asians gain more wealth than the right. average white person. Yeah, in our countries. So yeah, I know. <laughs> maybe maybe it's a formula that we should look into rather than, you know, kick them out of the house. Maybe we should, you know, start looking inwards and strengthening our family bonds. I think it's a good thing. I don't think it's a bad thing. I, I certainly don't think it's something to be ashamed of. And it seems that, uh, if not you, at least Jesse, um, certainly do think that it's something to be ashamed of. Uh, when did Personally, when did you me, move out? I didn't. You're so you're still living at home with living with your parents. I live with my father. Yes. He divorced or something, or your mother died, or what happened? No. Um, well, they they divorced, okay. and uh, I, when I was 11 years old, chose to leave my mother and my stepfather and to come live with my biological father. Okay, and my my grandparents, they both died in the very room that I'm, uh, that I sleep in. And I kind of think that there's something beautiful about that. Family's very important. <laughs> so you, uh, yeah. so you're helping him out or he's helping you out or, or you're helping each other out at this point? We, we help each other out. And to be completely fair and square, yes, he's helping me more than I am him at this moment. So you never moved out, so you never experienced that, that independence. I've moved out in a sense, but uh, not in the sense that I think you mean. But I don't want right. to go into uh, okay. no too worries. personal of, of my life. Yeah. Well, I'll tell but, you, people who, yeah. who do move out, they feel like finally free. It is kind of exhilarating to be living out on your own as a young man. Or even as an older yes. man, sometimes some there, there are people, there are guys who stayed with their mother, which is even worse. Past fifty, sixty I, I, years old. Um, I, I can def- I can definitely see that, and I, I do agree with you. That uh, it, it is a good experience. I have been out, and um, it is exhilarating being out on your own. And there is a sense of freedom, but there's also a sense of longing. Uh, you know, like uh, homesick kind have of you, a feeling. Have you dated? 
are you close to getting married or no? Just curious. Um, or do you even no, believe in marriage? Because <laughs> <laughs> you're um, atheist, right? <laughs> <laughs> there it is. I was waiting for the atheism. Uh, yeah, yes, I I do plan on getting married, uh, but not in a Christian sense. Uh, getting married in a different way, but not that it's much different. I do believe that the traditional somebody stuff. out there for me. Okay. Yeah, that there's somebody out there and uh, monogamy and all that kind of stuff. I, I yeah, I'm okay, but. Uh, I'll tell you. I just don't have your. I don't have your religious beliefs, so I kind of see things just differently from you. But I see a lot of truth in Christianity. I'll tell you that I understand uh, the helping each other out at times thing can be great, and it's it's nice if you have a family that's not imposing on you and controlling you, and you're or else you're strong enough to be an individual even within your family and still stand your ground on what's right differ from them but still be around them sometimes if it's not if they're not too evil i get that but there is when when life is tougher on you oftentimes that's what makes you grow that's what makes you uh improve and 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 thrive when you're not taken care of and that is a problem that is that is holding back those other cultures, as well as the, the many of the whites, that we're not um, facing the toughness of life with, uh, with boldness and with strength, and so we're not growing and overcoming. You know what I mean? Like uh, when you take I, away, I I... when you, like the, the American Indians, they were getting many, there were some American Indian neighbors of mine down the street when I was a kid, they were getting not reparations, but payouts maybe from the gambling casinos. But then they got kicked out of their tribe and they were deadbeats at that point. Uh, adult sons living at home with their mother and father. And then they got kicked out of the tribe because they weren't Indian enough. And the Navajo or whoever they were, whoever it was, decided, oh, we want to kick more people out of the tribe, more money for us. And so they stopped getting those payments. It was the best thing for them. They started working and, be, and started thriving, got married, and had kids. So sometimes that help is a handicap. It's debilitating. Uh, sir, it certainly is. I agree with you. I see your point. Um, but the two are not mutually exclusive. You, you can have strong familial bonds uh, as well as you know, taking risks and putting yourself out there, uh, getting out of your comfort zone. It's not like, you know, you should just live with mommy and daddy and uh, uh, depend on them. You have to take full accountability. You have to go out there and do something. Yeah. Uh, I'm just saying, uh, to borrow a quote from a really terrible movie, uh, Planet of the Apes, I don't know which one because there's so many <laughs> apes stronger together. <laughs> <laughs> Ape, not kill ape. <laughs> anyway, man, uh, how, yeah, just, how just old are you roughly, time. without doxing yourself, if you don't mind answering? Uh, rapidly approaching middle age. And why is it that, in your opinion, that many whites and many so-called educated people like we are um, are not getting married and having children at a younger age? I think it's, uh, well, it's a very complicated question. I mean, there's many answers to that, I think. There are... In, in your case, let's uh, say. In your case. Um, well, it's still a complicated question. There are okay. outside forces. Uh, I know. Be them, be them uh, NGOs or government programs or um, educational systems or just the fact that, you know, I'm flawed. I've made mistakes. Uh, I've had many opportunities to um, get married and to have children. Uh, I, I was sold also through entertainment and the media. I was sold this notion of 
you know, the hookup culture was the thing when I was growing up and, and the music yeah. and the movies. And it's just, you know, I'm, I'm, I made a lot of uh, you know, poor choices, uh, lifestyle choices. Corrupt as culture. I was going through. Yep. Yeah, yeah, there, there is a lot of, as you would say, evil out there. So I think all of these factors combined have led to a degradation of white people. Um, but, you know, I, I still fully intend, you know, I've done it before. I could do it again. I could find a, a woman and hopefully I find the right one and hopefully I do make a family. But Are you getting I, rich I in the meantime? That, <laughs> not right now, <laughs> but uh, I'm not really focused on wealth. I'm more inward focused on on family bonds. And yes, I do want a, a woman of my own. I do want children of my own, and they will know their grandfather. He will be in their lives, just as I knew my grandfather, and I was in his life. All right, man. Because um, I think that part of the setup. Uh, then they did this on purpose to us, I think, is that it's it's harder to be independent in the first place, too, because prices are going up and wages are are stagnant and um, money's getting cheaper because they're just printing money, among uh, many other things. Minimum wage was a scam. Uh, yes. You know, there's guys, there's guys who are, who I respect, admire, like Vincent James, who's just a go-getter, making money, getting kicked off of different platforms, getting banned from his workplace, getting doxxed and all that stuff, and yet he has his family and he's taking care of his family. I really respect that, and I think that um, it's going to be a lot easier to be able to take care of a family if you are making that money. You want to have, you want to do both. (laughs) <laughs> oh, absolutely. I do. Don't get me wrong. I'm not uh, against making money. I think that's, that's definitely yeah. something that we all need to do. Um, and you mentioned Vincent James last time that I called in the show. I said that I didn't know him. I didn't know that name, but he's the Red Elephant. Yeah, the Red Elephant's guy. Yeah, I've got I've got respect for that he's, dude. I, I have seen him, and uh, he's been I like on the phone state for the most part. Oh, has he? Okay. Yeah. And JLP's he's on, radio show. He's been on, uh, he's been on No White Guilt, uh, and that's where I first encountered him. Okay. I, I like his content. It's sad that he got uh, removed from YouTube. That's unfortunate. Yeah. But it was on purpose yeah. by those. Uh, he's too effective. Oh, yeah. Too effective. Yeah, well, there's, <laughs> there's, a, target. there's a, a thousand enemies out there that are, as you said, you think that it's done on purpose, but they're working to destroy uh whites and yeah. uh, deracinate us. And I agree with that. There certainly is. Mm-hmm. Um, but blaming, or we can't blame our way out of the situation. We're, we're not victims. Right. We're white men and women. And uh, just response to that clip that you played, love to all the white women out there. You're beautiful <laughs> and you can do anything. So, yeah, isn't that beautiful that the white women mostly voted somewhat sane? Especially the uneducated white women. 75% in Virginia is. voted for Youngkin, which maybe he's a rhino or whatever, but that's a lot better than voting for McAuliffe, which is what 90, yeah. 98% of black women voted for the Democrat a few years ago uh, over Roy Moore. So don't be, don't be uh, pretending that you guys have to go outside of your race. Anyway. Thanks, man. Exactly. Most of the white women out there, uh, just look at that clip. Now you know what non-white, anti-whites actually think about you. Exactly. <laughs> uh, as soon as you turn, they will hate you just as much as they they already do hate you. Right. You just need to wake up to it. And that was a wonderful sign to see. Yeah. So I will let you go. Thank you, Donning Armor. Take care. Uh, <laughs> celebrate the win, but don't get complacent. Yeah, we keep pushing. Um, regarding Virginia, yeah, the, it's so, oh, I thought that was Yunkin himself, <laughs> I'm looking at, they have Fox News on the, on the TV right there, yeah, that vest, <laughs> yeah, it did totally, I didn't realize Yunkin wears a vest, but, yep, that's what it was, um, people are, they're trying to hijack it and turn us more rhino, when that's the last thing we need, we need to go further right to what's right, am I right? 
I think I'm right. I'm talking about how Youngkin's trying to distance himself from Trump while not while trying not to alienate the Trump voters, according to what the mainstream media claims. I haven't seen any, hardly any Youngkin firsthand. I don't even know if I know what his voice sounds like. Okay, I've heard him like once or twice. But it's ridiculous. And speaking of ridiculous, uh, the uh, Second Amendment is under attack in the last few minutes here before we um, play some excellent YouTube audio library selection from uh, Kickflip Chris. Uh, the Second Amendment, yes, yesterday, according to the far-left female run out with the skim, the Supreme Court appeared ready to expand the constitutional right to bear arms. Not these bear arms. Carry guns, baby. In, uh, not these guns. Actual firearms. <laughs> In 2008, 2010, the Supreme Court's ruled that a person can own a gun at home for self-defense. So, duh! How about you can own, carry it around, too? Anyway, now the high court is hearing a challenge against a New York law requiring a license for concealed carry outside the home. It, ho- it comes after two New York men sued the state, saying they rejected app. Their rejected applications for licenses were a violation of the Second Amendment. Your right to carry, your right to keep and bear arms, meaning carry your guns, shall not be infringed during oral arguments. Most of the Supreme Court people, idiots, most of them, (laughs) seemed skeptical about the law and questioned why local officials have the power to weigh in on a constitutional right. It's the high court's first major gun rights case in over a decade, a decision that is not expected until June. I don't know. Do you have high hopes? I don't really. But anyway, if they strike down New York's law, it could mean similar laws in six other states. California, Hawaii, Hawaii, Maryland, New Jersey, Massachusetts, and Rhode Island could go down too. Every now and then there's like a decent judge. Do we have decent judges in the Supreme Court? We have the great, that black one, um... Justice Clarence Thomas, the one true justice on the court. Alito may be good. Alito, is he the one who's still living? They offed. (laughs) Did they off him? Uh, Scalia. And then there are Trump's justices, which they were pre-approved by these rhino establishment uh, people, his whole list of justices. And it's hard to get decent people approved. It was hard to get the rhinos approved. Remember what they did to Kavanaugh? Uh, And then Amy Barrett, barf. (laughs) Amy Barrett kissed up to Black Lives Matter in Georgia, Florida, because she has little black adopted children. See what I mean? (laughs) Because I'm talking, I'm kind of going back to the interracial marriage thing. These people end up feeling sorry for the blacks. It's not a good thing. It's not good for them. Last thing they need. Anyway, guys, hope you enjoyed it. Uh, TheHakeReport.com, JessieLeePeterson.com, RebuildingTheMan.com, TheFallenState.tv. Thank you, guys, and take care.